Hello everybody, I am Nidhi. I'm a scientific database curator in Uniprod database. Today I'm going to present a talk titled Protein Structures and their features in Uniprod KP. In coming slides, we will learn about protein sequence, their structure, and the databases which store relevant information about them. So what is Uniprod? Uniprod is a comprehensive and high quality database for protein sequences and their relevant annotations. Uniprod has various components such as UniRef. UniRef represents clusters of sequences which are grouped based on sequence identity of 190 and 50%. The other component of Uniprod is UniPark. UniPark represents the sequence archive of new revised or obsolete sequences. The component proteome provides set of proteins expressed by any species with completely sequenced genomes. Now the main part of Uniprot is Uniprot KB, that is Uniprot knowledge base. It is further made up of two component. The first component is Swissprot. The Swissprot contains the protein entries which have been looked into by expert scientific curators. Every bit of information for these protein is extracted from the scientific literature manually and presented for the protein entries in the database. There are more than 0.5 million such reviewed entries in the database. We have millions and millions of proteins. It takes good amount of time to manually review a protein entry, but we want to have information such as function for other proteins as well. So what do we do? For that, we have Tremble. It contains the proteins which are annotated computationally. The computational methods are devised carefully and applied automatically to derive relevant information for the proteins. In this way, we could annotate more than 100 million sequences. Let's get to the very basics. So what is a protein sequence? It is string it is a string of amino acid like a bead necklace where amino acids are joined side by side through peptide bonds. Now to carry out function, the string has to fold into itself to form a three dimensional structure. Just imagine if you have to keep the bead necklace in a teeny tiny box, then you will fold it in such a way that it can be placed in that small box most efficiently without breaking the necklace. When you have three-dimensional structure of proteins, the regions which are far away in the string, like these blue beads, they can come close to each other to perform some important function. I also want to emphasize a little bit on the importance of protein structure. First thing is, once the protein has acquired a three-dimensional structure, it can carry out some important functions such as bind to other molecule, etc. There are only limited ways a protein can fold. Therefore, a structure is more evolutionary conserved. In this example, there are three proteins, hemoglobin, myoglobin, leg hemoglobin from a plant. All these proteins, they bind to heme molecule, as you can see in this figure. You would notice that the sequence identity is very less among these proteins between hemoglobin and myoglobin, it is close to 25%. Between hemoglobin and this plant, leg hemoglobin, it is very insignificant and just 15%. But look at the structure of these proteins. They are noticeably similar and are more evolutionary conserved. Despite very low similarity between sequences, they bind to the same heme molecule and retain similar structure. The way we have Uniprod database for storing protein sequences and their annotation, we have a database for protein structure as well, PDBE, which stands for Protein Data Bank in Europe and stores structure of proteins. It also provides related information regarding these structures. There are more than 100,000 molecular, macromolecular structures in PDB database. So we spend a lot of effort in mapping 3D structures entry to Uniprot entries. So left hand side, 
we see protein structure in PDBE database, which are mapped to corresponding uniprot entries on the right hand side. In cases where we do not have uniprot entry for a particular structure, we create a new uniprot entry for it and provide information for that protein. You can easily look up structure entries in the uniprot databases. For example, for this pyruvate kinase protein from human, we can easily look up what are the structure entries on the uniprot KB page. So if you go to the uniprot page for this protein and look at the left hand side panel, you find a box called structure here. And if you click on it, you will know the accession of all the structure for this protein in PDB database. Here is the list of all the structure present in PDB database for this uniprot entry. So the next part is how we add important feature of a structure to a protein sequence. PDB database releases newly added structure every week. At uniprot here, we have developed an automated pipeline to import important feature from these structures, such as active site, or if a ligand bind to a structure, or it has some metal binding or carbohydrate binding site, etc. So first we import all these important features into Uniprot automatically and put them under unreviewed entry category. Later, the expert scientific database curators search every bit of literature manually and confirm this data. After all this very laborious literature curation and manual review, these protein entries represent high quality data and provide immensely reliable information. So we do import residue specific information from structure. For example, this is a protein, for example, this is a protein from influenza virus, and there are important features which are captured in the structure. As you can see, there are specific amino acids which are involved in some specific function, such as arginine at position 394 is binding to mannose molecule. All these amino acids are binding to calcium. Aspergine at position 146 is glycosylated and these two cysteine residue at position 92 and 417 are involved in forming a disulfide bond. Let's see how these features are presented in the uniplot. So if you click on the feature table box, it will show you all the structural feature in the easily readable table form. You can see here the metal binding sites. You can see the mannose binding site. You can see the residue which are glycosylated, which can see the residue which are involved in forming the disulfide bond. The table gives you the exact amino acid and its correct position in the sequence. And that's how you can look for the amino acid residue level information on the Uniprot page. We also spend a lot of time manually mapping the structural entry with the Uniprot sequence entry. We have some criteria for this kind of mapping. So the protein sequence extracted from the structure should share high sequence identity with the sequence in Uniprot. It should be more than 90%. Mapping is preferred to a reference proteome. For example, E. coli proteins are mapped to K12 strain. K12 strain of E. coli is a reference proteome. And for K12, we have all the proteins reviewed manually in Uniprot database. We also prefer mapping to the exact taxonomy for lower organisms, such as bacteria and viruses. For example, if a structure has been solved from HIV virus type 1, group M, subtype B strain, then we will map it to the Uniprot entry from exact same strain. Mapping is preferred to a manually reviewed cisprot entry. Mapping is also preferred to the longest protein sequence, and the special attention is given to short peptide, chimera, synthetic construct, and de novo design polymers. The mapping work is done in collaboration with PDBE under SIFTS projects. SIFTS aims to integrate structure with protein 
function, taxonomy, and sequences. All the PDB uniplot mapping, what we do, that data can be found from the link mentioned here on PDBE site. So if you want to look up structures and its features in Uniplot, how we go about it. On the Uniplot main page, you have option of advanced search on the top right hand side here. If we click on advanced search, then we can choose various options. For example, if you want to look for Uniplot entry, which have structure in PDB, those entries should be from human and those entries should have say disulfide bond. There are numerous options you can choose to customize your own search here in advanced search. And when we click the search button here, we get our results in a table form. So the parameters we have given, we get our search result. So all these proteins have structure in PDB, they are from human and the structure have disulfide bond as well. As you can see, there are around 1461 such protein from human. Out of those 1460 protein, 1380 are reviewed entries and 81 are unreviewed entries. Also, you can still look for many more features for this list of proteins. There's a button called columns here. If you click on this box, then you can choose and see many more features for these proteins. There are many options here regarding subcellular location, sequence, function, taxonomy, phylogeny, and so on. You can customize to see feature of interest for the list of the proteins. To summarize, here at Uniprot, we capture detailed structure feature of protein at residue level, an automatic pipeline and extensive manual curation by a scientific database curator ensure the high quality data for protein entries. All the features, including structural features related to proteins are neatly displays, displayed in the feature table. Various important features related to proteins can be easily downloaded and processed for high quality research purposes. This is the list of some useful links. You can also visit our YouTube channel for various tutorials. If you have any query, please email us at help at uniprod.org and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. The work we do here at Uniprod is a collaboration of a lot of people with various expertise. This is the list of all the people who contribute toward the Uniprod database. And of course, this work could not have been possible without the generous funding. This is the list of our funding bodies. You can find upcoming seminars at the EBI website, which lists all the scheduled webinars in the near future. Please do not forget to fill the survey. OK, uh, thank you all for listening and thanks for your patience. Uh, we have to finish the webinar now and best of luck with everything.